Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from Math Math Engineering. We're going to do a video for you on the method of least work. This is something that we haven't covered on this channel yet, but I realized we were missing it, so I thought we'd do a video on it. So we're going to solve a problem. We're going to go over a little bit about where the derivation comes from, because I remember when I did this in structural analysis, they didn't really tell me what we were doing. They, we just kind of went through the problem, and it was a little bit confusing. So yeah, just understand the basics, because, um, you know, on this channel we don't do derivation that much, but... You know, if uh, if you understand the basics of where the theory comes from, it does help. And as always, guys, if you're enjoying the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We really do appreciate it. All right, with that being said, let's take a look. So we have a method of least work problem here. We have a cantilever beam here. We have a distributed load across of 1.6 kit per feet, and we have a reaction BY. So right off the bat, we can tell that um, we have three reactions here and one here. So we have four reaction and three equations, so we have first degree indeterminate. Okay, so uh, now that we know that, let's take a look at the question. So it asks us to determine the reactions of the beam using the method of least work. So what is the method of least work? Well, just a couple concepts that are important here, okay? Um, the idea behind the method of least work is that the partial derivative, and this is according actually to Casliano's theorem, we'd have a couple videos on that if you wanna check that out, that the partial derivative of the strain energy with respect to a forced equals the deflection of the point of application of the force along its line of action. So that's kind of like a wordy uh, way of saying that the, you know, the partial derivative of the strain energy is equal to the deflection, okay? So if you'll recall from, for example, force method, we chose uh, an, pretty much any um, indeterminate method, we, we choose a redundant force, okay? And what we can say is that we can say that since the strain energy corresponds to the deflection uh, at a redundant force, um, that we replace the support with, the deflection will be zero. So we can say that the partial derivative with respect to the redundant force, in this case we're going to take our redundant as dy, is equal to zero. Okay, so that's where we start. We have to understand that this is kind of like a compatibility equation. So what we've done is we've created another equation that we can use to solve our, our problem with. So now that we have this, so that's just a really kind of basic introduction to what it is. There's, there's more derivation, but we'll go over it when we answer the question. So all we need to know is that the partial derivative of the strain energy for the redundant in that direction of action is equal to zero, according to Casliano's theorem. So let's go ahead and start. So the strain energy for a beam subjected only to bending is, we're going to denote here as u, okay? And u is the integration of l, uh, zero to l, and of m squared over two ei dx. So this is the strain energy of a beam subjected to only bending. Now, uh, according to the principle of least work, what we just discussed, since the partial derivative of the strain energy with respect to by must be zero, so this here, this partial u by partial by must be equal to zero, Okay, we can say that the integration from zero to L of partial M over partial BY times M over EI DX is equal to zero. And that is essentially where we get our kind of equation for the method of least work. Okay, so this is going to be the equation that we're gonna use now to solve uh, for the unknowns. So we're gonna solve for the reactions. That's good. So let's go ahead and start and take a look at our equation here and take a look at exactly what it is that we need to solve. So we do need m. We need an expression for m. So we need to derive the, the moment expression for this beam. Okay, so the first step in the method of least work is to express the reactions in terms of the redundant. Because we have a cantilever beam here, we can kind of like cut it and look at it from this direction and say this is our x-coordinate and we don't need to really worry about ay right now. But what you would do normally is you would kind of we have by as our redundant, you would, and this is our uniform load, this is 30 feet. What we would do is we would express ay in terms of by, and we would express ma in terms of by as well. And um, we'll do another question where we, that actually comes into play here. But, you know, you'd have by minus 1.6 times 30, okay, for example. So everything would be expressed in terms of by. And since we have everything else in this equation, Right, we can solve for by, and then we can solve for the reactions. So, and we can that's all made possible because we can say that the strain energy with respect to by is equal to zero. So this whole thing is equal to zero. So um, let's go ahead and solve for our m. So as I said here, okay, we have the, and I'm just gonna kind of separate this, right? So what is our m? What's our expression for m? So if we're smart about where we cut our origin, we don't need to worry about the reactions here. So right, so if we take the origin as b 
and we cut the beam here, okay, we're going to have by, okay, this variable distance here is x. We have 1.6 kip 4, so we have 1.6 x, and, and it's a variable distance x, and it's a variable load. And since we cut this here, we have our moment m in this direction, as our sign convention dictates. So let's take, uh, let's solve for m. So if we go ahead and solve for m, okay, we're going to get that m is equal to, well, we have m, that's negative, in the negative direction, okay? We have, uh, and we've taken counterclockwise as positive here, okay? We have... 1.6x times x over 2 because it acts halfway throughout the beam because it's a distributed load. Okay, so we have 1.6x times x over 2. And we have by, which is at a distance x, and that's positive. Okay, so solving for m, that's going to give us byx minus 0.8x squared. Very good. So now that we have our expression for m, uh, we're pretty much done here. So all we really need to do is go ahead and find the partial derivative of m with respect to by. We have m, we have ei, we plug it in and we integrate. So let's come down here. Okay, so our partial m, partial by. Okay, we're just going to take a look. m, by is our variable here, so x is constant. This is all just uh, constant, so that's going to go away. And our... Uh, partial m by partial by is simply x. So let's go ahead and plug in now. So we have partial u by partial by. Let's take the 1 over ei out of the equation. Okay. And let's go ahead and integrate along our bounds for the beam, which is 0 to 30. Okay. And now we have our partial m by partial by, which is just x. Okay. And we have m over ei. ei we already took out. m is simply by x minus 0.8x squared. Perfect. And that's actually pretty uh, straightforward. Um, go ahead and integrate and solve for by. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. You don't want to see me integrate that, I'm sure. Uh, let's focus on how to solve the problem. So try this on your own. If you're getting something different, post in the comments down below and I'll help you out. Okay, so we're going to get, once we integrate this from 0 to 30, and we plug in ei's constant, so that's just going to go away. Okay, we're going to get but this is equal to 9,000 by minus 162,000 equals zero. And we're going to get that solving for by. By is 18 kip, and that is up. Cool. So now that we have by, as you can see, we can go ahead and we can solve for our uh, reactions, right? So um, what's our ax? Let's, so now we can just take the forces. So if we take the forces in the x direction, we can just see that ax is equal to zero. There's no other forces in x. If we take the forces in the y direction, okay, we're going to have ay plus by, which is 18, okay, minus 1.6 times 30. That's equal to zero. ay is simply just going to be 30 kip. And if we take the sum of the moments about a, are equal to zero. Okay, we're going to get that we have MA. Okay, we have uh, this 1.6 kip force acting here. Okay, so that's going to be 1.6 times 30 times 30 over 2. Okay, and that's in the negative direction. And we have BY. We know what BY is now. BY is 18, and that's times 30. MA. Our reaction is 180 kip feet, and it is counterclockwise. There we go. Okay, so we solved for the reaction. We didn't get too much into the derivation there, but it is important to note, and the thing to take away here, is that the derivative, the partial derivative um, with respect to By of the strain energy must equal zero for the redundant. And as a result of that, we can come up with this new equation using strain energy for a beam. And we can equate it to zero because we made this uh, we we made this very clear here that this is equal to zero. By doing that, we have one unknown by which we can solve for, and then we can go ahead and find the rest of the reactions. So I hope that video helped you guys. Thank you for watching, and as always, hit the like and subscribe button. Take care.